Hi, my name is Chad Stevenson and uh, I represent myself and today I'm going to be making a cocktail which is a twist of the Hemingway daiquiri. Uh, first, I'm going to start with a shot of lime juice. The inspiration came from a, a guy that always comes into the bar that I used to work at uh, called Warrior who is addicted to Hemingway daiquiris and I'm not usually uh, a Hemingway daiquiri kind of person because I'm addicted to sweet cocktails and this is more like bitter I'm not really in for that but this is where the twist comes in and gives it that sweet kind of flavour uh, it's going to be double uh, Havana three. Um, with the, the glass that it's going to go into, um, I'm going to give it a bit of a vanilla essence because I want you to smell. It, the cocktail should be like an experience where you smell it and you taste. Should like work together, right? So it's not going to be a lot. It's just like probably half a half shot, basically. <laughs> and stick it into my and swirl it around. leave that here just to slow it down a bit. Right, and then I'm going to use uh, three slices of grapefruit which have been pre-cut and instead of using like all three with the all three with the skin on it I'm going to cut some of the skin off right and I'm going to leave one with the skin on And model. Gonna add a bit of apricots. Is that how you say it? Yeah? My English is not too good, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bar spoon of apric apricots. then shake. I'm not going to put a lot of ice cubes in it because I want, when I'm shaking it to like bruise the alcohol and the fruits that are in it. Then I'm gonna go back and swirl this thing here. I'm gonna swirl it. I want it to go all over the glass. Just when you drink it, you can smell it. And then double strain the drink. There it is. There we go. There you go. There you are. I call it uh, the Warrior Daiquiri. The Warrior Daiquiri. <laughs> Alright, thank you Chad. Right, my man, so um, if you could make a cocktail for anyone, dead or alive, what would you make and who would you want to make it for? Uh, I'd probably make... Uh, actually, I'd make it for Bob Marley. And it would be, um, what would I make him though? I don't know, I want to make him something quite strong, something lethal. Uh, strong back, huh? Guinness punch. Yeah, actually, a Guinness, Guinness peanut punch actually. That would be good, I've not had one of those in ages. Sounds like this, I miss my grandma, innit? <laughs> um, um, what is your pet hate when you're working behind the bar with someone or when you're watching a bartender work from the other side of the bar? What really annoys you? Uh, if I'm on this side of the bar and I'm on the bartender comes up to the bar, um, the pet here is 
coming up to the bar and cleaning my bar for me. Because a lot of bartenders tend to do that where they come up, you're serving them a drink, you turn around making them a drink, and when you turn back around, bartender is there wiping down your bar for you. I don't like it, it's my bar and I, I want to clean it when I, when I feel like. <laughs> um, right, if you could only make one drink for the rest of your career, what would you make? I'd probably make a, a Cosmopolitan. Is that because you'd be making them for girls? Exactly. <laughs> okay. What, if you could describe for me if you can your perfect bar, tech, bar experience if you're the customer. What's the perfect experience for you when you walk into a bar and where would the bar be? Perfect experience is just um, probably Kiko, like the atmosphere there. We, it's make, it, it makes you want to drink because everyone there is drinking, everyone there is friendly. When you're walking, you feel like a warmth, like everyone's like a family. And that is, like, that is what I like. I don't like going to any other bars apart from Kiko. To be fair. Zombies do that to a person. Yeah, exactly. Right. right, thank you very much, Chad. Okay.